What's going on, people? We are live. Hope everybody out there is doing well. I'm going to let this run for a little bit while uh, some people decide to join in on the live feed. Maybe I should play a little bit. I think that'd be a good idea. Let's play. tell you what it is yet. First off, thanks. Oh, hey, Riley. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining me on this. I appreciate you saying that I am awesome. That really does mean a lot to me. So as the title says, you know, we're going to talk about what is going on with the channel. And obviously, since Nam, things have picked, business has picked up pretty nicely. Uh, if I do say so myself, we've gotten a lot of really cool things. Stompbox Saturday started a lot sooner than I had anticipated it starting this year and stuff just keeps coming in and we're getting a lot of it in and we're getting a lot of it in really fast um i think what is really awesome share with you what you can see on this week's episode of stomp box saturday it's the wave function overdrive from nanalog audio this is uh, a really fantastic Tube Screamer style overdrive. We're going to be doing more with this, obviously, when the episode comes out. And this is definitely a keeper. I really enjoy it. You can find all that, all the info you need to know about this pedal on this week's episode of Stompbox Saturday. You may have seen the 60 cycle hum review. So if you want a little taste of what Ryan will do with this pedal, uh, go check out that video because it is a it's a very very good review of it and one that ultimately led me to reach out to these guys so it's a keeper and i'm really enjoying that one and another one that i'm working on right now actually it's going through uh it's uh render right now and it's just about done is the quadrant audio mirror from alexander pedals this is the first alexander pedal that i've gotten the chance to check out and I gotta say, I really, really like the way that this one sounds. Four different modes on it. This is going to be uh, in two weeks. It's gonna be the feature on Stompbox Saturday. And it just sounds really nice. Uh, I got something else from Alexander on the uh, little platform that I have next to me here in my home studio as I'm testing out. It's a brand new pedal that Alexander's putting out. Um, I can't tell you what it is yet. Uh, because it's technically not even really a thing yet. So uh, hopefully they uh, announce it some stuff uh, soon so that I can let you know. Uh, Riley asking a question, could you do an orange shootout as well as preamp pedals like Carbon Legacy? Oh, man. It just, the chat has to go away, like, as I'm trying to read your question. Maybe I can, that is not showing up. Riley, I will take a look at your question later on. Um, but as far as doing preamp pedal shootouts, yeah, I could definitely do that. Um, I do have the uh, the Vi preamp pedal, for those of you who don't remember. The Steve Vi Legacy Drive from Carvin Audio, Amps and Audio, I guess, now. Um, still have it, going to keep it, and uh, it's... It's kind of special when you get a low serial number. This is serial number six. This is like pre-production 
run, so I definitely, you know, want to hang on to this. And I also have the X1, which is sort of the X100B uh, preamp, which uh, has been announced, and I've done a video for You can check that video out at carvenaudio.com, um, and you can find that page, and you can watch that review, well, that demo. It's a demo for them. And I love that one. I think it sounds great. Uh, I've been talking to Victory about getting their preamp pedals in when they're ready, but those are several more months out. Those aren't going to be coming anytime soon. Uh, but, you know, I would I would actually really love to do something like that, a little bit more of a preamp shootout going into, uh, would you want to see it into the power section or would you want to see it as a pedal? Uh, let me know. Uh, keep Would love to see some guitar lessons or tutorial style videos coming from Joe. Joe, thanks for the comment. Um, as far as lessons, uh, I've taught before. I definitely have done that. But what kind of stuff are, are you really interested in? I would really love for you to tell me so that I can make some plans for that. I have considered doing some lessons. Um, the problem that I run into with a lot of lessons is that there are guys who are much better teachers than I am. Uh, what about a sound like other artists using orange amps? Hmm, that's not a bad idea, because that's actually a lot easier than most people think. Um, right now I still have, uh, I'll always have my rocker verb, that'll always be my baby. Um, I have the OR15 still, so if you haven't seen that uh, review and demo yet, please check that out. That was uploaded a couple days ago, and uh, boy, that, that's a freaking great little amplifier. And I have the Tiny Terror, so I think we could do something with that. And, uh, you know, me and the cats at Orange, we're, we're game to, to do some stuff together this year, so... I, I would definitely consider that. I think that would be a lot of fun. I have a lot of love for them, and I have a lot of love for their amps, and uh, I would dig doing something like that. So that's I'll keep that in mind. Uh, the preamp pedal thing, how about do both as a preamp and a pedal? Hmm. Okay. I see what you're getting at. Okay. So like doing one into the front end and, and then one in the power amp. Uh, Joe, okay. So Joe, you want some theory. Okay. And song construction. Song construction I can definitely help out with. Um, there's this there's this saying, learn all the theory that you can and then forget about it. And I find that to be a really uh, interesting perspective to have as well as one that I tend to practice a lot myself. I, I went to music school, I went to MI. I studied music theory. I did very well in my music theory classes. And there's a lot that I remember from my music theory education. But when it comes to song construction, I don't always rely on those skills. But having said that, it helps to know some basics. So I'll consider planning out some types of lessons around that. Song creation would probably come before uh, music theory. But I appreciate the idea, and I, really, I, I actually really like the idea now that I'm kicking it around in my head. I'm also looking for to do things that are very easy for me to get a lot of content banked at one point in time. So, case in point, say I wanted to take pedal A. Does Cockeyed Optimist have merchandise? We do actually have merchandise. Uh, it's very minimal at the moment, but uh, you can check out uh, our website, cockeyedoptimist.net. And uh, we have a store there. Uh, right now you can get, uh, we're running a VIP package where you get both of our EPs signed by the band, uh, including our, our, our most recently departed bass player. And uh, we'll, we'll fill you in on all the stuff ahead of time. I'm actually mixing the next single for our album right now. We're going to be releasing it over the next year and a half, two years as a series of singles. So I'm mixing that right now, and it's it's coming along really nicely. I'm I'm really pleased with it. Um, you'll get all the info on shows, all the info on new merch items before everybody else. So you're kind of like in the in crowd, so to speak. Um, but one of the ideas, just to get back to what I was saying, um, would be like pedal A and pedal B 
head to head. I don't know if that's something you guys are interested in because I get a lot of questions uh, asked about how does this pedal sound versus this pedal. Um, and hey from England, thank you Riley, hey back right back to you. Um, we need a bassist unfortunately because with a lot of the stuff that I do in our music, a lot of it can be textural and a lot of it's riff and for the singer, who's my wife as well, uh, she relies a lot on the bass movement to, in order to track her own pitches while she's singing. So it's very difficult for her to sing over a riff if she doesn't have some sort of foundation underneath to be able to find where she needs to be in the context of the song. So that's why bass is important. We actually just auditioned somebody uh, last night, and that went really well. Don't know if they're the one, but it's going well. Uh, I don't know who Molly Gitgood is, but if she wants to move to the United States and play... No, oh, Nolly. Yeah. I don't know. Nolly seems to be okay with periphery, which is fine. But I, I'll, take in, I'll take anybody willing to play in a hard rock band with lots of riffs and, and make some cool music. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the theory thing. I like that idea. Uh, I like the song construction lessons idea. Preamp pedals we can definitely take a look at because those are getting very numerous these days. Um... If you guys want like a head-to-head -head pedal comparison thing, that's something that I definitely uh, would like to do. Oh, Nolly's not in periphery anymore. I don't know if I could afford his sideman feeds, though. Just saying. Uh, so, yeah. Those are a couple different ideas. Um, but to further go into some of the updates, yeah, I'm looking to see what you guys want to see as far as new content goes. Um, pedals are starting to come in a lot, <laughs> like really a lot. And with the Stompbox Saturday format that I've done over the last five years, which I really enjoy doing, it's very hard to feature things when they're new. So sometimes, say for example, right now I have the JHS AT2. This came out months ago, and I'm finally going to get around to doing my own review of it um, within the next two or three weeks. And so one has to wonder, months later, how interested are you guys in seeing another video on this pedal that's a little bit older, but it's not brand spanking new? I think it sounds great, and I have uh, had a lot of fun uh, doing some stuff with it, but I want to know uh, what you guys would think about me adding on maybe a, one more pedal demo a week, still branded as Stompbox Saturday, though maybe uploaded on like a uh, a Tuesday or a Thursday. So, you know, still Stompbox Saturday branded so that we can just keep that content stream and that, and that series going, uh, but doing it on a different day of the week so you guys get a little bit more for bang for your buck or more for your click and your subscription, I guess is what I'm really trying to say. So there's something for you guys to chew on. Um, the other thing that I really would like to do is I would like to do live streams, and I would like to do them on Thursdays, kind of like what we're doing right now, except a little bit better, and at a set time. I would really like to do live streams on Thursday evenings. So I want to know where you guys are in the grand scheme of the world. Where are you in the world? What time do you usually watch live streams? I want to know your thoughts on having something where we all can get together at a set time. We can talk about just about anything. Uh, you should get Glenn Fricker. Can I ask? My tube amp has a strange hissing sound playing. Uh, hey, Riley, go ahead. Do me a favor. Hit me up on Facebook. Um, you can go ahead and send me a friend request or, or whatnot. Um, just hit me up via Facebook, and, and I'll try to see if I can answer that question in more detail. Um, so going back to the... Uh, going back to the live stream thing. That's something that I, I really would like to do, 
because that seems to be something that you guys are into. I know I'm into uh, watching the live streams, and it's something that I enjoy. Uh, okay, Riley, you are my friend. Go ahead, send me a message, and I will do my best to answer your question. Um, yeah, because the comment just completely disappeared on me, so I can't even really go back and uh, read it and reference it. So, I would really like to do the live stream thing. I think we could have a lot of fun, and I think we could do it in a way that Right now I have better internet than I did on some of the last live streams <laughs> that I did. Um, and it's working really well and I'm very happy with that. So let me know uh, what time you guys think would be great to do a live stream. I'm, keep in mind I'm in California, west coast of the United States, so Pacific Standard Time. Um, usually, and this is just to make sure that this all fits into my normal day-to-day, week-to-week, Kind of schedule. I would like to do the live stream around 5, 6 p.m., maybe even 6.30, not 7 or 8 o'clock. That's usually the block of time during the day where I'm cooking dinner. Just just so you know, I, you know, you need to know what my life is like so that I can be a part of yours. Uh, now is okay for me, but it is 50. Okay. So it's midnight in the UK, that's true. Okay, hmm. Well, it's something for us to think about. Obviously, you know, the live streams will be here for you guys to come back to um, in perpetuity, and you can watch however you see fit. I don't want to keep them long, because there are some live streams that I've watched that have just been way too long for me to sit through the whole thing. So it really probably be about an hour, hour and a half, two hours at the maximum. Um, we can cover just about anything that you guys want to do. Hold on one second. Okay, we got, there we go. Chat comments, I can see the chat comments now. Um, shout out to you, Blimpus, what's up, brother? Um, so yeah, I would really like to do something like that. I think we could have a lot of fun, and we could talk about gear, we could talk about songwriting, we could talk about riff writing, we could talk about the music business we could talk about new gear that's come in and maybe we'll even just unbox gear that i get into if i can even contain my excitement and not unbox new gear until then of course that all depends on the companies and what they send me and how secretive some of these things are but that would be the plan so thursdays say somewhere in the vicinity of 5 to 7 p.m would be the live stream show we'll come up with like a funny little name for it and have ourselves a, a good time live lessons um maybe we'll see about that are we playing the oc fair this year man did you see us at the oc fair wow um as of this moment we are not i don't know if that's going to change because our experience last year at the fair... Hold on one second, let me turn my amp on standby. Um, our experience last year at the OC fair was not very good at all. Um, so, I guess it's story time. So, last year, uh, we played at the Plaza stage, which is... Uh, if you don't... Most of you probably don't know the Orange County Fairgrounds, but that's where... Uh, they have the Pacific Amphitheater, and it's a smallish amphitheater, good-sized venue. A lot of classic rock bands come through there. You know, they do the state fair circuit. And there's a small stage they set up every year at the Orange County Fair uh, for local bands and local music acts. So we uh, were going on after the kids from the local School of Rock, which is awesome. You know, there's nothing I love more than, than seeing kids get into music because that's the only way that music is going to stay alive is if if kids are exposed to it um so we were told by the stage manager you know once the uh once the kids are, are cleared off the stage you can go ahead and start unloading your stuff so the kids had pretty much cleared off the stage and we were given the go-ahead by the stage manager to start loading our stuff on. Now, at the time, I was carrying my 
can't remember if it was my board or my amplifier. I think it was my pedal board. But the assistant stagehand, who essentially was serving as the monitor engineer, just straight up, like, full on grabs me by the bicep and pushes me back, not kindly, but with force, like with a very good amount of force and grabbing my bicep like I have just overstepped some fucking boundary that I should not have crossed. I have no idea, but that was just exactly what he did. And I was just I'm surprised that myself that I did not explode in his face right there because for the whole rest of the day, this guy was an absolute problem for us. Um, we brought our Zoom recorder. We had checked with the fair ahead of time because we were filming that show uh, as a means of trying to get more gigs as a, you know, thing you do. And uh, we brought our Zoom H5 with all the necessary cables. We had checked with the fair and the stage manager well before the show uh, if we could get a feed from the, the board. Everybody said, sure, not a problem. We can absolutely do that for you. We had everything ready to go. The, literally all they needed to do was plug it in. And this guy, you know, our singer hands him the... Uh, Hands him the Zoom, like, oh, they said I could get it. Free. No. Just no. Like, not even a negotiation thing, just no. Flat out no. And, uh, you know, we say, well, we checked with the stage manager, and he said it was okay, so he begrudgingly decides to uh, give us a board feed. Uh, to which his response is, it doesn't work. Meanwhile... Our singer, who is a girl, my lovely wife, by the way, uh, walks over, plugs it in. It's working in five seconds. Homeboy, you got showed up by a girl who knows more than you do. And he just proceeded to be a problem the whole rest of the performance. Yeah, I wonder what his problem was, too. You know, it wasn't like we overstepped any real boundary that I can tell. You know, I, I make a point. Sometimes I can be a little irritable, I, I'll admit. You know, sometimes I, I can be... I try really hard not to be rude to people, and especially in an environment that I'm trying to make a good first impression. I, I struggle a lot with uh, my temper, and I do have some anger issues that I'm trying to address and become a better person. And uh, this is one of those instances where I am really surprised how well I kept myself in check. Because this was just, you know, you are physically handling me in a way that you shouldn't be handling. You aren't working with the artist to get them what they need in order to perform. And... Yeah, long story short, we had a terrible experience, and I, I doubt that we will be uh, going back to the Orange County Fair, which is a shame, because I think if we were able to, uh, you know, if we were able to do the Orange County Fair again, we probably would, because in the past, we have had experiences that were good, but... The last couple times have just not been very good. You know, we played the hangar, and you know, I got that big jumbotron on, and we paid twenty five dollars for a DVD of our performance that was in like, it kind of looked like a, a was filmed on a video camera that was from uh, two thousand and eight. You know, it wasn't high quality, it wasn't high definition, and you know they're large broadcast style cameras, and these were just. The picture quality was just terrible. So, yeah, long and short of it, we're probably not going to be doing that. Uh, we are going to be playing the Vans Warp Tour in Pomona on June something or other. The hangar stage is cool, and that's the thing that really bummed me out, is that I, I really liked that stage. Um, I just wish that maybe we were a little bit uh, further along, had a little bit better following, and that we could get on that stage at the right time. But, you know, they really want 
tribute bands there right now it seems like so it's not a good time for uh not a good time for original bands i guess i could say but like i said we're playing warp tour in pomona in june and quite frankly that's that's like everything I, i've wanted you know I, i've wanted to play that tour for so many years and so many times and to finally get that it's june 21st uh I I want it. You know, we're going to try to make as good an impression as as anything. So, that's what you can look forward to for up from us in the summertime and I'm excited. And more new music, more new songs. Yeah, it'll be a way better audience too. It's the kind of audience that we really want to have watching us. And I'm also it's a little it's a little special for me because it's the first time that I get to actually play on the Warp Tour. I didn't have to go through a lot of that BS of doing somebody mentioned Music Man, uh, you know, Ernie Ball Music Man, Battle of the Bands. I don't have to go through that bullshit. Like we did it on our own. We didn't have to be a part of some crazy contest. We got that because we were just, you know, determined as all hell to get on that show even for just one day so you know this is our one shot our one opportunity and we're you know all in so to speak to uh borrow a popular catchphrase in uh independent wrestling right now we are all in and i'm excited um yeah that's that i i can't think of anything better you know but we're gonna be releasing new music we're gonna uh, a warp tour is ending yeah and that is sad but it holds a little special place in my heart because the first year the first time and the only time that i'll get to play the warp tour uh i have a 14 year old sister and she has been given the go-ahead to be able to come to her first warp tour which sadly will be the last cross-country warp tour um and she's going to be able to watch me uh, perform and experience it. And the reason she gets to experience it is because somebody close to her is a part of it. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm, I'm very humbled at that opportunity to be able to expose uh, her and her little group of friends to this crazy environment that was so important to me uh, growing up so that's pretty cool we don't often play the coach house uh I w actually we did never have played the coach house it doesn't seem like it's the right place for us i don't know that could be me i've been to the coach house a couple times it's good it's a good place to be uh it's a good a decent place to stay, see a show the coach house is a venue in san juan capistrano for those who don't know in southern california uh nice nice little venue but not really our not really our crowd not really our thing but who knows you know as things grow i would love to play some venues that would be considered not proper you know play the coach house and, and do something really special um heck you know take over some coffee shop and and you know have some rad rock and roll show that you wouldn't think would happen in a space like that you know I, I have a lot of ideas of things i want to do just don't have the money to do them what are you gonna do so that's that and i'm excited um we're approaching the 30 minute mark here um i just want to thank all of you that have stuck around for this whole thing and all those of you who have been watching for any length of time it's really meant a lot i'm happy to hear your feedback you can of course let me know what more content you guys want to see after this is uploaded down in the comments section uh once this is all said and done i just i want to know what you guys want to see if there's anything that i can do to connect with you guys a little bit more and uh has quenning true henning truly quit GitCon? short answer yes Short answer, yes. That's all I'm going to say on the matter for now. I, that's all I'm going to say. 
But please let me know what more you want to see. Um, and if you liked any ideas that I mentioned or that others mentioned, please thumbs up those comments. Let them keep coming. You can always hit me up on Facebook. Uh, you can either friend request me or find my artist page, which the link uh, should be down in the description below. Hit me up on Instagram. Uh, you can also find me, you know, you can find my email address. It, it's somewhere around here. You guys can find it. Let me know what you want to see. I want to do something really special. I want to make 2018 a really good year for the channel, and I want it to grow. So with that said, we're at 30 minutes, and I got to get ready for something else. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. And until next time, I wish you guys all great tone and happy stomping. Cheers.